हेलो टू ऑल वेलकम बैक टू यूट्यूब चैनल मेडिकोस फैक्ट्री सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द नेक्स्ट सेशन ऑफ एडिनर्जिक एंटागोनिस्ट सो इन द प्रीवियस सेक्शन वी हैव डिस्कस द अल्फा एडिनर्जिक एंटागोनिस्ट सो इन टुडे सेक्शन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द बीट्रा एडिनर्जिक एंटागोनिस्ट सो डू सब्सक्राइब द चैनल इन केस ऑफ डाउट प्लीज यूज द कमेंट सेक्शन एंड द कंटेंट प्रोवाइडेड हीयर इज वेरीफाइड बाई द टॉप फैकल्टी so you can use this content for your exam purpose as well clear so let's begin so first we'll start with a classification of beta blockers so these drug block effects of beta blockers and inhibit beta receptors mediated response of catalcol amine so beta blockers are blocked by beta adrenergic antagonist as we have seen the classification of alpha blockers non selective then there was selective and non selective inside with those reversible reversible clear same way in the beta blockers there is a non selective first generation beta blocker and third generation beta blocker first generation beta blocker is beta 1 plus beta 2 blockers are combined which have the actions on both beta 1 as well as beta 2 while third generation has a effect on the alpha and beta blockers so first generation beta blockers first is propre nolol you can classify next is sotalol timolol nadolol levobunolol meti pranolol and penbutolol these are all the classifications of first generation beta blockers if we talk about the third generation beta blockers then you can say labetalol carvedilol usindolol cartelol and medroxalol these all are the third generation these are very much imp classifications for the theory point of view as well as the practical point of view so do remember so there is a non selective now we will see beta 1 selective second generation you can example is atenol lol ac butolol bisoprolol esmolol and metoprolol and third generation that is celiprolol nebivolol betaxolol so these all are the beta 1 selective second generation and third generation antigenic antagonist and the last is beta 2 selective there is only one butoxamin clear so there is a classification and always remember that in the university exams and everywhere the classification is must which is asked in the exam like classify beta adrenergic antagonist such a way questions are asked which are very imp for you all okay so now let's begin we will start with the pharmacological effects of beta blockers so first we will see the effect of beta blockers on heart it blocks the cardiac beta 1 receptor so first action of the beta blocker is that it will block the beta 1 receptor so what are the actions there will be the decrease in the sa and av node activity there will be decrease in the automaticity and there will be decrease in the heart rate as there is a heart rate decrease there you can say it is a negative chronotropic effect in the heart rate and automaticity that is rhythm related to heart rhythm clear there will be the decrease on the force of myocardial contractility so you can say it is a negative inotropic effect also there will be the decrease in the cardiac output and there will be the decrease in the oxygen requirement in a myocardium there will be decrease in the conduction in the artery and av node so there will be the decrease in the signal conduction 
also there will be the increase in the refractory period of AV node. So whatever the signals is passed in the AV node, there will be the increase in the refractory period, but there will be the decrease in the cardiac work. So that is the preload and afterload. Clear? And there will be the membrane stabilizing capacity of the beta blockers. What is this? It is a method through which local anesthetic work. That is the block propagation of action potentials across nerve cells. And this is the property of beta blockers. So it can be used in the arrhythmias. Clear? So these all are the actions on the heart. Now we will see the actions on the blood vessels. Initially they will block the vasodilatory beta 2 receptors. As the beta 2 receptors are already blocked, there will be the more alpha action because it is already working. And if there is alpha action, alpha does the constriction. So first it will do vasoconstriction due to alpha 1 receptors and it will lead to increase in the BP. But on the prolonged use, so if beta blockers are continual use, then they will gradually adapt to the persistent reduction of the cardiac output leading to vasodilation. In the starting there will be the vasoconstriction as it will be adapted, then it will lead to vasodilation and reduction in cardiac output. Ultimately BP is reduced or we can say normalized. Clear? And the beta blockers will decrease the renin release from kidney, hence there will be the decrease in the aldosterone and there will be it will cause a vasodilation because in the RIS mechanism we have seen the angiotensin leads to the vasoconstriction. But there will be a decrease in the aldosterone use and it will ultimately lead to vasodilation. Now next effect we are going to see is on the respiratory systems of the beta blockers. It will block the beta 2 receptors hence there will be the blockage in the bronchial sooth muscles that will lead to the bronchospasm. As there is a bronchospasm it will lead to the bronchial asthma. Clear? Also beta one blocker has a risk risk to bronchospasm. What is the effect on the skeletal muscles? If you are using a chronic usage of the beta blockers, it will close the weakness and tiredness in the skeletal muscles due to beta 2 blockage. Because the beta 2 has a property with the skeletal muscles. Clear? Also there will be the reduction in the stress induced tremors because tropanolol reduces the exercise capacity. We have already seen na, beta 1 plus beta 2 second generation classification tropanolol. Clear? Then the metabolic effect. What is the metabolic effect? Non-selective beta blockers will decrease the hypoglycemia, low blood sugar in a diabetes mellitus. Whereas selective beta blocker one has a left wave on it, and the beta blocker mask hypoglycemic symptoms like tremor, cardiac and sweating. What is the mask hypoglycemic symptoms? Because beta blockers have a symptoms of hypoglycemia such as rapid heartbeat and tremor, but they block beta blockers, so there will be the decrease in the release of norepinephrine. As the norepinephrine will decrease, it will result in the slowing of your heart work and hence there will be a decrease in the tremor, tachycardia and sweating with the blockage of the norepinephrine. Clear? It is a non-selective beta blocker decrease insulin sensitivity also and it will decrease the lipolysis. Also it will decrease the HDL and L LDL level will be increased whereas the HDL level will be decreased. What is the effect on the CNS? It will decrease central sympathetic outflow leading to the decrease in the release of adrenaline and BPS. There is a decrease in the sympathetic flow. Hence, this will be reduced. Also, it will produce sedation, lethargy and sleep disturbances. Propanolol reduces the anxiety due to interviewer during examination. What is the effect on I? It decreases the secretion of aqueous humor and the interocular tension is reduced. What is the effect on the local anesthesia? Propanolol has a local anesthetic effect but due to its irritant nature nowadays propanolol is not used. If you apply it to the eyes it causes corneal irritation and redness. So we will keep this session till here. In the next session we will discuss the various drugs and their effects. This was about the pharmacological actions. So in case of doubt, please use the comment section. Do subscribe the channel. Thank you. Have a nice day.